Last time we finished our little character and we're able to get him to move to the left. As you can see here, we hit the left key and he moves and he stops at the edge of the screen, but none of the other keys work. So let's finish setting up that functionality. So first thing I wanna do is uh, get a way for our character to flip around. So when we hit the left key, uh, as you could see just a second ago, he wasn't turning to the left. So this is where self.direction will come in handy. And as we defined earlier, one means that he's facing to the right and zero means that he's facing to the left. So when we press the left key, obviously we wanna set the direction to be to the left. And then I also want to set up a condition here where we have self.direction equal to one. So if he's facing already to the right, we're going to set the step count to zero. So that means if he's facing to the right, but we just press the left key, we're going to the left. So I don't want to be in the middle of a walk cycle. I just want to go ahead and start the walk cycle all over and go from there. Uh, so we also need to add to our step count so that later when we make that walk cycle, um, he can, we have a, a way to choose different frames. All right, so that's looking good. Um, now we've got the direction set up here, but this doesn't actually do anything to flip the image. So the way we're going to do that is down here in the draw hero section. And this one is going to need another if statement. So we take if hero dot direction is zero. So normally when he, when we spawn the hero character, he's already facing to the right. And we'll just, we're just gonna set this one to be, uh, if he's facing left, right? Remember zero means that the hero is facing left. If he's already facing left, then we wanna flip it. So we're gonna take the current hero sprite that we passed into this function, sprite, take that and then use pygame.transform.flip. So transform is the, the module that has all of your, your scaling, your position, anything to change position or flipping the, the sprite. Um, that's where all of those functions are going to be. So for the flip function, you're going to take the current hero sprite and then pass two Boolean values. Um, the first one is for the X axis. The next one is for the Y axis. So we want to just flip him to the left. So that's on the X axis uh, horizontally. So we'll set true there but we don't want to flip him upside down, so we're going to set false right there. Now, if we run it again, we can see if this is working or not. So I press left, and there we go. He's facing to the left, but we still have to fix all of our other keys. So let's go take care of that. Um, the, the left key function here is going to be really similar to the right one, so I'm just going to select everything, uh, do shift alt and down to copy the whole thing, and we're going to change a few things here. First, we're going to change the, the key. So we're using the right key. And then we're also changing this part of the rectangle. So we're going to say that if the right side of the rectangle reaches all the way to the right edge of the screen, which is the width of our, our window, then we can run some of these things. And this one, we also have to flip this around. So if he's facing the other direction, uh, if he's facing left and we press the right key, then we're going to restart the, the step count cycle. And we're hitting the right key, so he needs to be facing to the right. And um, when we move him to the right, uh, we don't want a negative value, right? That brings us closer to zero. We're going to be giving him a positive value. And that should take care of um, all of that stuff right there. And we'll want to make sure that I actually have this closing bracket there. So let's give this another test and see if both left and right keys are working. So the left one works and the right one also works and he flips the right way. So we can move on to the up and down keys. Let's start off with the up key. So if the rectangle, if self.rect.top is greater than zero and the press key is K up, then we want him to move. And this makes sure that he doesn't get to the top and go out of bounds. So there we go, we have that. And then we're gonna move the rectangle. So move IP and it's moving up, which is closer to a, a zero value in Y. So we're going in a negative direction, the base speed, the negative base speed and 
we also want to continue the, the step count. So we'll add one to the step count. So self.step count plus equals one. This function is also very similar to the one for the down key. So we select everything, shift alt down, and that'll um, copy everything for us there. Let me make this a little bit bigger. It's easier to see. So we want to change up to down. And then kind of like with the, the right key, we want this to be less than the height, right? So if he's inside of the window, then we can move him around. If he gets too close to the bottom, then we don't want to actually move him anymore. So this is going to be a positive value now, but this one will be kept as the same. And then one last thing, I'm going to set up something for our um, walk cycle. So we're going to take if self.step count is greater than or equal to 59, then we're going to reset self.step count. And this will make sense when we get to the actual walking cycle. So that looks like it should be working. So let's see if we can actually move our character around. So we have left, right, up, and he stays inside of the bounds. And there we go. So our moving function is good for our hero character, but we need to add some enemies into the mix here. So let's take this character class, just the first three lines, and I'm going to copy it up here. You have a little space. And if you go to the hero word and do control D and control D again, we're going to be able to enter multi-cursor mode and then just change this to zombie. So now we're going to start working on creating our zombie character class. Um, it's a little bit different. The sprites are the same size, so a lot of things can um, be inherited from this character class. But the first thing that's different is the rectangle, right? With the character, we spawn them in the center of the screen, but this one, we just want to spawn them randomly somewhere else. So we'll do self.rect equals self.surface, and then get rectangle. We're going to put him somewhere, in, or put his center somewhere randomly over here. So we'll set center to be equal to, uh, open parentheses, random, we're using that random module, do random.rand int between 50 and width minus 50. So that'll put him somewhere. Um, I use this 50 as a little, little bit of padding so that he doesn't end up um, outside of the bounds and stuck there. So we'll put a comma there and then we'll do another random.rand int 75, height minus 75. And so that's for the Y value. So now we've got that all set up. And then we also want to set up their speed. So I made this one a little bit different from the um, from the hero character because I want some of the zombies to be a little bit faster and a little bit slower just to add a little bit of variety into it. So we have that. And then again, shift alt down to copy that whole line. And then we'll just do pretty much the same thing for the Y value. All right, so we have our initialized zombie character set up, but we also need to give him uh, a move function. So we'll do define move self, always pass self to the function uh, for a class. And then I'm going to go ahead and set up the walk cycle uh, condition at the top here, like we did um, at the bottom of the hero class. So if self dot step count is greater than or equal to 59, then we will set self dot step count to zero. Okay, that's all good. Now, uh, we don't need any keys to move our character around. Um, he's just going to do that on his own. So I'll do self dot rect move in place. And then we'll just set it to whatever their X and Y speeds are. X speed and then self dot Y speed. All right, so that's all good. But if you if you think about it, um, we're just adding the X speed and the Y speed every frame. And this doesn't help us if he goes out of bounds. If it'll just keep adding it and he'll go further and further off the screen. So we need some sort of condition set up so that when he reaches the the out of bounds or when he reaches the edge of the screen, he flips around and goes the other way. So if the self dot rect dot right, which means if the right side of our character is greater than width of the screen, right? If he's uh, outside, if he's all the way to the right, or 
if the left side is less than zero. So that means if the, the right side of our character is outside of the screen or the left side of our character is outside of the screen, we want to flip them around. And the way we're going to do that is self.x speed and then multiply that by negative one. And then we're going to set, change the direction, self.direction also to be um, times equals negative one. So that takes care of the left and right sides of the screen, but now we need the top and bottom. So if the self.rec.bottom is greater than the height, or the self.rec.top is less than zero, we want to change the y value. So self.y speed times equals negative one. So I didn't put something for the direction because uh, whether if he hits the top of the screen or the bottom of the screen, we don't need to flip the character around. So that's everything for the zombie character. Um, but now we have to add a little bit of logic inside here to draw all the zombies. So I'm going to do that in the next video. And we're going to also set up some of the initialization for our zombie character um, so that he can move around and even spawn uh, every couple of seconds.